0.800 score. I'm going to keep an eye on that. While we go into another Infernal versus Vanguard match. And we have on the bottom side here on the left. Our good boy Winkle, German player. He's been tearing it up as a Infernal player as well. And Arif has been one of the few but a very powerful Vanguard players. So one of the things to know is that Arif was actually a very good consistent player on previous tanks. He even made the top eight a couple of times. I think he is on the standings table as far as I know. So it's going to be interesting to see what he decides to do here for Secluded Grove. It should be a very fun match. Getting his scout now to harass the Ethereum worker. This is obviously because usually the play is to go Conclave first. And to get Gaunts out on the map, you need 15 Ethereum. So with that expensive Ethereum out there, you definitely want to have someone to be mining that Ethereum if you're not going to be able to grab it yourself. Going now, quite a bit of micro here on the side of RF. He's just going around in circles and he's going to try to deny the shrine for as long as possible, but the expansion will go up. And we can see, I think I know what Arif is going for. I don't know about you guys, but I, I see the writing on the wall. This is a vol... A, oh my god, what's the name of the of the thing? I, I used to remember it. Virilium Claws, I believe. Virilium Claws or something along those lines. Yeah, Virilium Claws. Extra 16 damage to light units. And light units, let me tell you, they are everywhere. So this is a very scary thing to come up against. So you don't want to do it very often. You have this engagements and the item vault. And of course, massing. Look at this amount of dogs. And the dogs deal a lot of damage. They deal 8 damage normally. And then when you look at something like Gaunt, which has a light uh, tag. It doesn't show it here, but it has a light tag. That essentially means that you're doing... A grand total of 24 damage per. You can see two hitting with four dogs. All of these guns. That's incredible. And sure, your dogs get infested. But that is a small price to pay to be able to kill them this quickly. Look at the gun here having to move away. The bouncing axe is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting here to try and get a kill. Because it's going to bounce against two other targets, I believe. Uh, attacks are infected. Bounces twice. Yeah, so you get your first hit. And then it bounces to two other targets. So if your opponent has three units, for instance, you can hit one of the units and you're actually hitting all of the units. And that is very powerful as well because of the infest mechanic. Infest is going to hit these units. And the only the not only does it create a fiend when the unit die, that is the main thing that everybody knows about infest, but the secondary effect, and I will think after learning about it, it is one of the most powerful ones is that infest causes damage over time it deals one percent of the max health damage of the unit per second for 10 seconds that is the full duration of the infest and that is one of the things that really messes up with a lot of particularly vanguard players that are trying to go for harassment with something like hornets or with something like scouts because the scout has a good amount of health it has 120 health so that feels like a good amount of health until you realize that you're losing a little bit over 1% of that health whenever you're going into an engagement against Gaunts. And that is guaranteed damage that you're going to take. Thank you, Sap, for the follow as well. I just saw it popped up. And although veterancy can help you quite a bit to sustain yourself, it is definitely time for a repair matic if you're a Vanguard player. Look how powerful this stuff is. You can repair your scouts very, very quickly. In fact, all mechanical units, you can repair them. And this is going to give our player era here the time that he needs to get into this expansion now he's going to lose vision over this camp but it's but he's okay with it because he's going to go out with all of these dogs and he knows because of the speed camp on the map you can see that there is no speed camp tag here on the minimap that means that that camp has been taken and he actually knows that the health camp has been taken as well and now he's gonna get the guns he gets one kill two kills three kills on the guns that's a lot of kills that are not gonna be creating in fest now and he can absolutely kite and get the kill on the fiends as they show up 
but it is a tough fight, especially if your opponent is really good at macroing. And Will and Winkle is pretty good at macroing. Now going for a third on the side of Winkle, and he is doing an absolute great job at protecting his own expansion on this side, and the dogs are not able to do anything about it. Seeing that, going for a third makes a lot of sense. Not a lot of ramp yet happening for neither player as trying to expand and control the area. Going for the speed camp for the extra 125 resources that it gives if you kill those units. As well as deny the infest on the side of um, your opponent. So you're gonna see for each kill is 25 Lumini. So get all the kills all together and you get 125. You're actually leaving one alive. No, you don't get the full 125. But that's okay, it's a bit more experience as well. These scouts are dealing so much damage. You can see that it is for the elite scouts, they do 10% extra weapon damage. And we just talked about the fact that they are dealing 24 damage per hit. So you can add you can add 20% up on that one. And I'm not good with maths, and I'm not gonna do the math live because that is exactly how you end up on. Uh, failing <laughs> everything so i'm not gonna try that this structure the meat farms as well this is another quick thing to note meat farms just like habitats are considered light structures and for the purposes of the varillium claws they get the extra damage as well they get hit with it plus 16 extra damage and the fall hogs are another light unit that also suffers from this so you can see now the kiting with the scouts and just trying to avoid giving the infest while also keeping them alive for that extra experience as vanguards do get another thing worth noting about experience is that the unit that gets the kill gets the most experience but it is also shared among the other units that were around when the kill happened and once your units start getting into the max veterancy status which is that uh, champion status they no longer get experience but they actually move the experience they share the experience that they would have gotten with all of the other uh, units around them so it is a critical thing to get at that point so if you can get a max veterancy scout that just means that all of your other scouts are going to be getting more experience the more you play with them so taking a gander at all of the structures that are happening here we can see a double conclave going up getting all of the ethereum fully mining on three bases and on the other side we're getting just enough mining here to be happening we also saw for a moment and i want to get where the drop is going to be happening for the doombringer so a doombringer drop using guns is a very very powerful tool especially against vanguard but also against all sorts of opponents because you can convert those into fiends having them as fiends give you the gives you the ability to disrupt the mineral line the luminite line and even the ethereum line on middle places so you can see here the doombringer it's gonna make the long trip around here to the third and actually most players would opt to go for the main get this particular ethereum because it is much more difficult to defend for the other opponent see here all of the scouts look at how many have very high veterancy and now here comes the strike with the guns they're gonna create so many fiends here eight guns moving out and all of those bouncing axes now making their work getting the fiends it gets two kills two fiends four fiends now and you can see how fast they advance going for the exos and now moving up onto the first now the dogs the scouts they want to get in on this fun they're going to try to get the guns as much as possible they don't actually get a good bites and doombringer is just going to leave but all oh, the exos are right there he has the option to try to teleport back but he needs to be very careful about that it keeps him somewhat risky if the doombringer dies all of those guns are going to die as well but the scouts are there and that is just free experience you can see how much experience they keep having and this is all micro that it has to go for both players they're not really looking at their macro right now there are a bunch of guns here waiting on base it is it would be the perfect timing to try to strike the expansion while the scouts and the other units are sort of hanging around and not doing anything here comes the guns again they get a couple of kills on the scouts those are huge these are huge kills for the side of Winkle, getting all of those scouts dead, and especially the fiends too, now to boot. And 
Oh, that's massive kills on the bobs. There's a big fight going in. I think Arif is having quite a bit of trouble now here to maintain the control over the map. Finally gets a chance to push them away, but that's your main absolute kill. And, you know, Winkle is on four bases. There's not a lot you can do about Infernals once they get into four bases. He even has Hellborns now coming out. There are going to be a couple of Magnodons, I would imagine, every once in a while to try and help. But for the side of Aerith, he gets a kill on the Doombringer. That brings down the Gaunts, but all of those resources, losing all of those scouts, which had a lot of attack potential for him, even on a straight up fight, really. And they are now just gone to the wind. He's going to try to push on this fourth, but particularly because of the narrowness of this location, it makes it much easier for the Hellborns to do their job. You can see them charging up and shooting and look at the amount of damage that they can get out of there. And there are no medtechs in this bowl right now. That is scary for Aerith. Not having any medtechs to heal up your units, you're going to need to push back greatly. And he's feeling compressed. At this moment, there is not a lot that he can do. He can just mine a little bit of Ethereum, try to stay on three bases. But other than that, he has to take a fourth eventually. And you can see that Winkle has that as scouted. So fourth is not going to go down, or at least not unnoticed. There it is. And now Winkle can decide, okay, so if he wants to take a fourth, I can move my units and I can potentially aggress against them. And even going for the middle, just Winkle is fully moving into this position of having complete control over the map. Now the med tanks join in and they're going to be able to do a little bit of healing. Remember that the med tech heal is a little bit different than just a straight up heal. It heals for a little bit to start, but then it also le uh, leaves a tiny bit of a linger effect. On those units that heal them up over time uh, you also need to be careful to not a click on a particular unit or building while you have your med tech selected because the med techs will try to attack the unit instead of stopping and trying to heal the units around it so you don't want to necessarily a move straight into a particular building you want to play it a little bit safer than that and keep everybody good Good use of the sentry post here to make massive heals on his side when the units are outside of the combat outside of combat and they are near a med station they heal by eight uh, health points per second that is quite a bit more health than just standing around and trying to heal everybody through that away a lot of shroud stones here to protect the fourth base and the army of winkle also has to get its momentum going onto this side a bunch of imps are gonna die but i don't know if winkle is gonna have too many problems with that infest does go down the ritual to try and get the kill uh here but infest is not gonna be enough to clear this area and the army of winkle is getting a little bit more unwieldy with so many hellborns he doesn't have all of the things that he needs but a full mass of guns and a magmadon to trample all of them it's gonna make sure work of this fourth expansion and again this is a fourth that uh, Arif really, really needs. He's been pushed off a lot over on this game with the gun drops, with everything else. And he's going to start to lose the economic battle if he's not careful. He has a good mass of units, a good mass of med techs as well. And it's going to take a decisive victory. Right now, the army of Winkle is split. So he could potentially look to strike and get that advantage now but going against the gaunts is a very scary prospect even when you have exos these exos are not a veteran they are straight out of the training facility they're not going to be able to do a lot of damage that way and you know the the base on the side of winkle of arif is now transitioning over into hornets but there are a couple of units that are idle a couple of bobs that are idle it's going to take a big fight to advance here and we see some of that by getting the meat farms on the side of the speed and trying to get the fifth base on the side of winkle who is just economically pushing forward here a couple of imps tried to go for the explosion they get the lancers the lancers are down now it is just a ball of exos 
and they have to stay alive here. They need to move outside of the Shroud Zone. The Shroud Zone is doing great work. The Shroud Manifestation, would get, which gives 100% attack speed, is doing work here against the Exos. It gets the kill on that Manifestation, but not before it deals a lot of damage. And now the Weavers are here, and the Weavers can deal a ton of damage. Infest is going to hit all of the units, and although they have Veterans, if they die within the next 10 seconds, they are going to produce a Fiend, and it can es escalate very very badly he gets a speed camp on the last second and will push out and the fifth for the side of winkle is going to stay up and just look at this big massive army for the side of winkle a bunch of hellborns all of these guys if they fire on a massive exos that's bye bye exos no matter the veterancy and you also have the guns here to provide a little bit more assistance they are going to be getting the infest out and again bouncing three times you don't need one gun per exo you just need a third of the amount to make sure that you're hitting all of these exos with infest and once they die they become fiends and the fiends themselves will do the job that you want them you can see a mass exodus of bobs now to try and grab this area there are hornets that are maybe gonna try to harass the side of winkle who tried to take the middle of the base but cancel at the right time he's not gonna be paying the full cost of it but here comes the guns and the hellborns the speed boost now on the side of the guns they're gonna be able to catch up and kill the exos if they try good control over the center of the map it seems like winkle is happy to just let the fights go he doesn't want to engage right now he's just happy letting rf kind of die himself down and grind himself down and not have an exit here grabbing the vision camp now he's gonna see that there is a hellborn and potentially more units and now a flayed dragon going up into the sky gets the infest out on a couple of the units and hornets are not necessarily the answer here the flayed dragon has a lot of health although those hornets could be very powerful the main problem is that the gaunts the mass of gaunts that Winkle has is good enough to kill the Hornets before you can do much of anything. Even the shielding ability from the um, Vanguard is not enough to fully protect this entire engagement. But he's gonna go for it. He has to go for it. There is the, fir the first shot of the Hellborn. And he's pulling back. Winkle is pulling back. He doesn't want this fight. And look at all of those Hellborns just shooting out into the sky. The Gaunts are trying to fire. Onto the Hornets, they could get really good effects there. Another wave of Infest is going to hit the Hornets and the Exos going down. The Guns are getting in each other's way to get effective fire. And the Exos are trying to stay alive as much as possible, but the Hellborn shots, they are incredible. Infest is dealing so much damage as well. And the Fiends, as soon as they die, they turn into Fiends and that is more than enough to continue the aggression. This is going to be the push for Winkle to get into this last little ledge. No, he's going to pull back. He's going to deny vision, and now on the side of Arif, he's feeling the pressure at this point. The med stations will go down. The map just winkles slowly creeping in, never going for a full engagement that would be decisive either way, just choosing to slowly get rid of the units and push forward one by one. But now the Hornets, they're going to be going on to the fifth expansion on the side of Winkle. It's going to be interesting to see if Winkle is going to take the base rush that this could effectively be. The Flay Dragon is right here and it seems like Arif wants to get this Flay Dragon kill. Look at those shots! He's trying to escape and he gets the kill of the Flay Dragon. That is really good for him, but I don't know if it's enough. A Flay Dragon kill might be cool and all, but look at the army for Winkle! Compared to the little tiny army from our boy RF. I don't know if that is enough to maintain this position. And you can see the Shadow Flyers now coming in. Those are going to make sure work of the Hornets whenever a fight happens. And now, oh, this is going to be a killing blow for him. Losing his fifth expansion would be absolutely disastrous. He doesn't have anything on his main on his expansion or on the third, like the third is going to go down any minute now. He has to protect the fifth. 
But look at this. This is a bunch of Hellborns. They are weak, though, and getting it from behind could be the decisive factor here to make the fight last a little bit longer against the Hellborns. But look at all of this. The Lancers get their upgrades. They are pushing forward with the kinetic re redirection. They're going to try to fight it. The guns are not getting really good attacks, but now a full map shroud is going to be more than enough to continue healing units just a tiny bit. The Shadow Flyers get the kill on the Hornets, and this is probably going to be GG called by RF. And Winkle is going to be taking his match for round number four, and the players are going to be talking in the lobby, wanting to find out what would happen. Not sure, too little HP. XP. Yeah, just talking about what happened during the match. This is actually a pretty interesting insight. I'm not living because I want to find out what they're talking about at the moment. <laughs> cool and GG gets called.